Once in a while, Mother Nature feels the need to flex her muscles and remind us who's in charge. And that's exactly what happened just a few days before Christmas 2022 here in Tennessee and across the eastern half of the United States. We dropped from the low to mid 50s to below zero in just a period of eight to 12 hours, depending on your location. And when that happens, a flash freeze, all kinds of damage happens to our plants. So let's take a look at a variety of plants and we'll talk about what to do now, what to do later to help your gardens thrive and hopefully get some of these plants to come back from the brink. The first category we wanna talk about are broadleafed evergreens. These come in both perennial forms like this hellebore and then a very common landscape shrub, Otto Lucan, Laurel, Skip Laurel, the whole Laurel family. This would also include magnolias, hollies, nandinas, uh, and some other perennials also. But um, one of the things I wanna talk about is why this damage happened the way it did. So we experienced a more than 50 degree temperature drop from low to mid 50s to below zero uh, in eight to 12 hour period of time. When that happens, and we're gonna get kind of scientific here for a minute, but when that happens, the water that's in the leaves of these, especially of these broadleaf evergreens, actually freezes. When water freezes, we know that it does two things. It crystallizes and it expands. So inside of the plant's cells, that water is freezing. There's a cell uh, wall around that. And as that water freezes and expands and even becomes uh, little shards of crystals, it pushes through that cell wall, damaging it. And then when a thaw comes, the cells uh, basically bleed out, not blood, but water, uh, and die. And so that's what we're seeing is cell death to the, to the extent where we're actually seeing tissue death. Uh, there was enough cell damage that the tissue is now dying and the tissue is the leaves. What we hope is that these leaves will turn brown, shed, but that the stems themselves are not damaged. And on these laurels, the stems actually look pretty good and green and the, bu the buds are still pretty plump and green. So what we would hope in this situation is that this old foliage will fall off and come April, when things begin to leaf out again, these will leaf back out and they will be okay. One of the hardest hit plants that I've seen in any landscape, including my own, are the Akubas. These are plants that grow in deep shade and really a generally reliable broadleafed evergreen. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the really uh, most common variety that has little yellow speckles all over the leaves, but there are many, many varieties of Akuba and they did not take this flash freeze very well at all. You can see from this plant that the foliage has turned almost completely black. And even worse, if you look at the, at the growing points, the buds themselves have turned black and you can just peel that bud right out of there and it's mush on the inside. So there's nothing living. And in fact, you have to go way down inside the plant the stems are black halfway down. Most of these are going to have to be cut back probably to less than 12 or 18 inches. Even, even shrubs that are five or six feet tall may have to be cut back in half. But again, we don't want to get anxious about that. We want to wait and see, let the shrubs tell us later this spring how far we need to cut them back. When you begin to see buds swelling and new green growth coming out, that will inform you how far back you need to cut things. So one of the most important points that I wanna drive home right now about this damage is that number one, we haven't seen all of the damage yet. So if you prune now, you may have to go back and prune again later but you also don't want to prune off or cut back more than is necessary. We wanna leave as much good, healthy material as possible. And I just don't think we're going to be informed about that until at least the end of March and probably into April, May, and maybe even June on some things. 
One of the questions that has been asked most often on a Facebook post I made a few days ago is what do I do about my Lenten roses or hellebores? So I thought we would take a look at some hellebores here also that obviously last year's foliage has frozen and turned brown. The good news is the buds were all well protected by this, this growth from last year and you can see that even just in the two weeks since the freeze, the new spring growth has begun to emerge just at the right time. And we even have flower buds on these Lenten roses that will be up, you know, eight or 10 inches high in another three or four weeks. And uh, a month from today is early February. And these will be just uh, arriving for spring, late winter and early spring, like they always do. Generally, we cut the old foliage off of our Lenten roses anyway. I would go ahead and do that. Just be careful not to cut that new growth. And growing in here with this Lenten rose is another evergreen perennial called Rhodia. Uh, a lot of hosta growers uh, grow this. Generally, it is evergreen, but it has taken a hit in the freeze. And uh, I would go ahead on any of your perennials that are looking brown, that have turned brown, but they're perennials that will reemerge from ground level, I think it's okay to go ahead and cut those back now um, and just clear the way for the new foliage to emerge in the spring and be fresh and beautiful. So it's not all doom and gloom. Uh, our, our perennials obviously will survive and, um, and probably even thrive this growing season. Uh, the woody plants are the ones we're a little more worried about right now. But any of your perennials that are looking a little worse for wear, I think going ahead and cleaning up and trimming and uh, doing whatever you need to do to make them look better. Uh, and again, to just clear the way for that new growth to emerge later in the spring uh, is probably a good thing. As we're talking about evergreen trees and shrubs, we also ought to take a look at some of our needle evergreens. 95% of them probably are going to be okay. Our junipers, most of the pines, really, really cold hardy. And, and while that severe temperature drop was hard on everything, those plants are a little more resilient. But one uh, group of plants that I have also seen some questions about uh, are the plants like deodar cedars and blue atlas cedars, the true cedars. Uh, which can be a little bit marginal. They're zone seven plants, and we are zone seven here in the Nashville area. Um, but, but in a situation like we found ourselves in with this flash freeze, they can be just a little bit marginal. Um, and I think we're probably uh, in the deodar cedars and the blue atlas cedars going to see some needle drop. Uh, you can almost if I shake this, they'll fall off a little bit into my hands. This particular deodar cedar is in a little more protected area. We have tree canopy overhead. We've got the house just behind us. The driveway comes up to us. All of that uh, helps to protect plants. If this was a, a plant that was more out in the wide open, we might actually see even more browning and more needle drop. Again, I know I've said this several times now, but time really is going to be what tells us uh, ultimately uh, what's going to happen. What I will say is if you see old needle drop on your needle type evergreens where the needles are dropping further back into the plant, that's normal. What we hope we don't see is needle drop way out here toward the tips where the new growth is going to come from. That would indicate that these stems maybe have been frozen and died and can no longer support these needles out here to the tips. So if you see browning and needle drop further back, that is okay. But what we're really watching are these branch tips out here toward the ends, the side branches. We want those, even if they're a little discolored, to retain their needles. If we start seeing needle drop way out here on the ends, then we know uh, we may have a problem on our hands. I don't want to just deliver bad news, so let's take a look at a group of plants that I really was kind of concerned about, but that I think have come through the freeze better than I expected them to. Uh, that would be the Japanese maples. This beautiful specimen here is called Bihu, uh, a golden barked Japanese maple. And what my concern was about Japanese maples and, 
and other thin barked uh, tree species and shrub species, some of our azaleas, uh, even young newly planted red buds and dogwoods, was that their bark is so thin that when we have a flash freeze like we had uh, just before Christmas, sometimes the bark itself will split wide open and expose the interior part of the, the woody part of the tree. And when that happens, it can do significant damage to uh, the limbs of the trees, the stems of these more ornamental trees, and sometimes even at the base, the, the bark around the base of the trunk. The good news is, so far in most places, I'm not seeing that kind of damage. So we may have a little top pruning to do in the spring. We may have a few dead limbs that need to be pruned out. But I think overall, uh, our Japanese maples, maybe young dogwoods, young red buds, newly planted uh, trees, uh, in, in, inspect your trees, young trees or, or trees, ornamental trees like this, and look for splits in the bark. But if you don't see any, uh, I think for the most part these plants are going to be okay. They might be a little le later leafing out. Again, we might have a little cleaning up to do in the spring. Uh, but I think, I think our Japanese maples and most of our ornamental trees and shrubs, uh, other than especially the deciduous types that lose their leaves, uh, are going to be just fine. Love them or hate them, a lot of us have mahonias in our yard, these prickly uh, evergreens. and like a lot of our broadleafed evergreens, the Mahonias also took a hit in this flash freeze. Uh, most of their foliage has turned brown, even though they appear to be a little bit green on the underside of the leaf. I think what we're going to experience with these is that they will completely defoliate, and in the spring, we will get new growth out of the ends of the stems, um, and perhaps even further down the stems on some of these. Let's talk about hydrangeas because we have several different kinds in different categories. Uh, and again, questions about what to do. How do I cut them back? Should I cut them back? Uh, and the answer for most of your hydrangeas right now is don't cut them. Uh, probably almost all of your hydrangeas are going to be fine. Oak leaf hydrangeas should come through this with no trouble at all. Uh, your paniculata, hydrangeas, uh, things like Tardiva and Bobo and um, Limelight, Little Lime, those types of hydrangeas, those flower on their new wood. Uh, so even if you do see some dieback, you can do some early spring pruning in March and April and you'll still get flowers. Uh, the one group of hydrangeas that I'm a little concerned about would be the macrophyllas, the uh, purple and blue and pink types with the big mop heads. Uh, they tend to uh, be a little marginal, at least for bud hardiness in our area anyway. And I think from what I have seen so far, uh, when you do the scratch test on the bark, uh, we're looking at um, those plants being dead almost to the ground. They will come back from their roots. Uh, but I think our big old-fashioned, what we sometimes call French hydrangeas, again, the big blue and pink mop heads, uh, I think we're looking at probably doing some really hard pruning on those a little later in the spring uh, and almost a rejuvenation type of pruning. And I mentioned the scratch test. I want to show you what I mean by that just really quickly. If you take your thumbnail and just do a little scratch on the bark of a shrub, you'll see when I scratch that, that that is bright green underneath, and sometimes you'll even see a little moisture. Um, that is good and alive all the way out here to the ends of these stems, so we have no worries about whether or not this plant is alive. It is, it's in good health. If you go into some of your hollies, if you go into some of your other hydrangeas and you do that scratch test and you see that it's brown underneath and there's no life, then unfortunately, uh, that at least that portion of that stem is probably dead and again it's just going to be a waiting game and a matter of time to see how much dieback we have in some of these shrubs. Well as we go through the coming weeks of January and February uh, a lot more is going to be revealed to us about how much damage was actually done by this pre-Christmas flash freeze that we experienced here in Tennessee and across the southeastern United States. Uh, and really the eastern half of the country. 
I think the most important information for me to impart to you right now is to be patient. Wait. Don't get anxious. Uh, we are going to see some losses. It is inevitable. But we don't know right now what are going to be total losses and what are going to be partial losses and what are going to be successes, things that will have come through this with flying colors. Again, with your perennials, I think it's okay to go ahead and cut perennials back, clean things up, get ready for spring, uh, be ready for the pretty stuff to happen because it is going to happen. With your young trees, maybe newly planted things, thin bark species like we talked about, wait on those with your shrubs like hydrangeas and a lot of your broadleaf evergreens that are going to drop, inevitably drop their leaves, uh, just be patient. Give them March, April, and May to show you that they want to live. I would say that if something has not leafed out by the end of May, it's probably not going to. And at that time, it's time to cut our losses. And you know what? A plant loss is always a gardening opportunity. There's some hole there that's waiting to be filled. The nurseries are going to be stocked and they'll be waiting for you to come in and uh, plant something new. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.